first, we're going to watch a world-class photographer, Shannon Sturgis, as she demonstrates how to shoot a Don Julio co cocktail. Following that, our panel of world-class alumni, business owners, and bloggers will share their thoughts on maintaining an online presence and how to stay at the top of your game. Our panelists include some of my favorite bartending personalities. First, we have Mr. Adam George Fournier. Adam moved to Los Angeles in 2009 with dreams of becoming a television writer, which perfectly explains why he ended up as a bartender. Over the last decade, Fournier has run bar programs across the city from the beaches to downtown LA, including his role as an opening bar manager for the Nomad LA, where he helped lead the team to multiple Tales of the Cocktail Spirited Award nominations. Adam has also found success in many cocktail competitions, including a spot as a national finalist at the 2019 US World Class Competition. All of these skills have culminated in his current role as a consultant for hospitality businesses and as a cocktail and spirits writer. He's penned several articles for the award-winning food and drink section of the Daily Beast called Half Full, and additionally runs his own spirits and cocktail blog with accompanying Instagram handle, Bottled in Bond LA. Next, we have Miss Laura Newman our 2018 world-class U.S. Bartender of the Year. Laura was the first woman to win the U.S. Championship title and has a storied resume to back it up. She's a Brooklyn native that successfully managed many top bar programs, but found true happiness in her 2016 move to Birmingham, Alabama. There, she opened a nationally recognized classic cocktail bar called Queens Park and She's in the process of opening a new neighborhood bar named Neon Moon. Newman has been featured in numerous national, public, uh, numerous national publications, and she's also got a degree in hospitality management, as well as being a certified sommelier. She's a woman of education and mentorship, and has had many opportunities to host local trainings and present at seminars and events across the country. Our third panelist is Miss Anu Elford from Seattle, Washington. Anu is the sole proprietor of the destination bar Rob Roy and is the co-owner of three more acclaimed Seattle bars, including No Anchor, Navy Strength, and Vinny's Raw Bar. Elford has worked in over 40 bars across the U.S. and around the world and has shared her knowledge at trade conferences such as Tales of the Cocktail and the Manhattan Cocktail Classic. She has a degree in behavioral science, has successfully taken the bar five-day program, and is a registered yoga teacher. Finally, we have a special guest joining us from Brooklyn, New York, and that's Shannon Sturgis. Shannon hails from Arkansas with a degree in philosophy. She's a professional photographer who focuses her lens on food, cocktails, and lifestyle photography. Shannon has been photographing the world-class U.S. competitions for seven years and worked with some of the top bars and restaurants in the United States, so she has a great understanding of what it takes to make a photo really shine. Sturgis has worked with trend-setting companies such as StarChefs.com, and her work has appeared in numerous books, magazines, and online publications, and most recently in the newly published book, Spirits of Latin America. You can follow Shannon online via Instagram at Shannon Shoots Cocktails. We'll get this informative session started by watching a video of Shannon's cocktail photography process. I'm Shannon Sturgis, a Brooklyn-based photographer who specializes in cocktail photography. You definitely know your side of the process making beautiful things that taste delicious and look delicious. So I wanted to just show you a little bit of my process when I am shooting your work. So typically for a style photo shoot, I like to 
get organized and put all of my props on a table so I can see everything. I've got several different kinds of textiles I could use. I have some lovely plants. I've got two bottles of Don Julio. I have one to be the beauty in the photo and one to make the cocktails with, very important. And I got a couple coasters and multiple kinds of glassware. And I have a simple black card with a, these are just clips that you can buy from um, just a general store. It's a way to block light or um, with white kind of bring highlight or reflect light onto a cocktail. I also have a silver, very fancy, um, shiny reflector that I got using one of those mail order meal kits. So that was free. And I have um, a mirror that I like to use sometimes that I can reflect light back onto a specific part of either a garnish or even the face of a bottle label just to make it brighter. For the margarita today, I brought a few choices for us to consider and some that I definitely am not going to consider but wanted to tell you why. So there's this etched glass, which to me doesn't scream margarita. It's a little serious, a little, I don't know, not the vibe. I have another one that's a little fussy, kind of fun, cute. She's a maybe, but you know, maybe not. Then I've got one with a foot on the bottom, which I think is fun, and margaritas are fun. So she's like on my eye on her. So I have another glass. It's a classic heavy bottom glass, you know, authoritative but approachable. <laughs> yeah, glassware has personalities. Then we got this guy who's a bodega type glass. I definitely look at this and think margarita. So there's a few choices for us today. Um, on a styled shoot, you have a you can make different choices about glassware. Perhaps if you're shooting for your bar, you just want to use the glassware the bar has for that particular cocktail you're serving. Because maybe you post on Instagram super fussy garnish and you have this glass, it's etched and all these things and then a customer comes in and they say, oh, I want to I want to get that cocktail I saw on Instagram. But then when you serve it to them in just a plain, classic glass with the garnish you normally use there might be a little disappointed or just you want to express your bar through photography and that includes using props or glassware that and even plants that you have in your bar So this is just pretty simple. I like to, when I use bowls of fruit, to not have the whole bowl in. I like to just put it on the edge as a little detail. I also prefer ice to be over the rim of the glass because <laughs> I just think it looks nicer that way. So if I were shooting this for Don Julio for them professionally, I would be very concerned with making sure that I can read this label very clearly. So I would take a separate photo and sort of just put the label on later and make sure it's super perfect in focus. But that's probably not your concern at the moment. For now, really just seeing the shape of the bottle and seeing, um, you can just kind of see the uh, name Don Julio, I think is perfect. So. That's what I'm doing right now, making sure I can read it, see the top. Um, just work from there. And shoot as you go, even if you think that it's not good. Like right now, I want to change stuff and move this cocktail, but I'm just going to go ahead and take a photo just in case, because later you might go, ooh, I wish I had done that. I'm going to move this baby back into the light, because the light is back. Now with the shadow, feel like 
that brings just an extra little detail that I feel like maybe it was missing before. I like to have some kind of detail in the foreground, um, usually blurred out, but just something to give the eye something to do. I don't know if you guys have noticed the light has changed about seven times <laughs> since the beginning of this. So I'm gonna just move closer. Sometimes working on a longer table can be a challenge because your drink is far away from you and you wanna get your camera closer. Luckily with iPhones, you can get a lot closer without having to fight the edge of a table. So right now I'm just pulling it even tighter and I just have that bottle in the background, like you know it's there, you know what's going, like it's a cozy shot. I feel like people like this kind of shot um, generally. On Instagram I mean, and brands and such. It's a crowd user. I get asked a lot if I use fake ice or, you know, whatever other kind of fake things you could do. Obviously, sometimes when making cocktails, we, uh, some bartenders that I work with, stylists, won't necessarily make the actual cocktail They'll just they know what it looks like and they'll just use um, they'll just use you know similar colored liquids so they don't waste their product. So I do work with one client that we use fake ice occasionally, but generally it's all real baby. So you'll see the light is coming, it is a little back into the side. That's my favorite kind of light. I kind of shoot into the light a little bit. And it's one of those things, one of those rules that people say, like, don't backlight cocktails because it's bad, but they don't actually, I feel like people maybe who aren't photographers would say that. Um, <laughs> but I love a backlit cocktail. You can see it, it, it brings the color. You can see the ice. I don't know. I usually back inside light all my cocktails. When the light is coming from the front, I feel like it makes everything look flat and that's not my jam. Okay, so I moved the table into the middle of the room. I want to take advantage of this line of light. Just gonna kind of move the cocktail until I see where maybe the, the light is hitting the um, ice for a little highlight. Take advantage of what your space is giving you. I'm, I don't know, I always just like move it around, like maybe this isn't the way that you would think would be the front of the cocktail, but like you might as well try some different options. So an easy way to add visual interest, architectural interest in your photo is to place the cocktail on the edge of a table. Not totally like it's gonna fall off, but just see how the two different tones just add that little something extra, a little texture in the background. So right now I'm just playing around. I'm just moving the cocktail in different places, moving the table. The light keeps changing, which is annoying, but also it, it does look really beautiful. So you just have to kind of work with it. Um, move around. This, what's great about the harsh light is you can get a very dramatic photo. So there's shadows being made. And you can see the shadows, but I'm gonna see if I, oh, of course the light is changing, but I'm gonna see if I can maybe add my own shadow. Be 
you look at this image, oh, the light, the light changed. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll insert the photo later. You'll see, great. I have been shooting Diageo World Class for six years. This would have been my seventh year. So I've seen a lot <laughs> of cocktails um, and all the work that bartenders put into making these beautiful presentations. And um, I love that I get to capture the, all the hard work that they've put in. I know that most people on here are probably bartenders, so I just wanted to give some sort of basic photo advice for um, just so you can better take photos at home and um, since you have maybe some extra time at home <laughs> to work on this. So um, first things first, it is so important to find the light. Um, I know that's hard in bars, um, occasionally, but you might not even be shooting in your bar right now. You could be shooting at home, but just start observing um, when the light is in certain places in the location you're shooting. So um, you'll know what time of day you need to be ready by. So if you're shooting, if you know that you get the best light coming in at 4 p.m., you know you need to get all your stuff ready so you're ready to go at 4 p.m. Or a lot of times morning light can be a little more forgiving. Evening, night, evening light can be a little harsh. The harsh light can be great. All light can be great, guys. Ugh. So find the light. Figure out when it is, where it is, and drag stuff around to be near it. Uh, whenever I shoot at home, it is a disaster because I move everything away from the windows and I'm just like, pulling up tables and like propping up. I have these surfaces that are basically tables without legs and it's a total mess, but you just <laughs> go in tight. No one has to know about the mess. Follow the light. So that's my number one. And always make sure that the style is the style of your bar or the kind of vibe you want to express. So second, always take a variety of angles. So a lot of times what cocktail menus are 12, 12 ish cocktails. That's not 12 posts. So when you are shooting one cocktail, you should take several versions and the video will show this. I, I honestly barely use any props and I take six or seven different photos that you that are all different from each other that could be used at different times. So that's really important to use your time wisely in that way and rotate the cocktail or put different props behind it or use no props or use like the Don Julio bottle as a prop. Um, it's just, it's just the best way because you walk away with having uh, hopefully seven different versions that you could post at different times. So when I shoot for a bar, I usually give at least four versions of each cocktail. That's the minimum. So that way they have four absolutely different shots to use. All right, third, um, when you post on your Instagram is the, this is what I mostly use. So it's what I think about. Um, make sure you don't post two photos back to back that are super similar to each other. Or even in that case, have the same cocktail, even if it's a different kind of photo, just, you know, Spread the love, make it, you know, have like a cocktail that's, she's tall. She's full of crushed ice, Laura Newman. She has, <laughs> she has mint, you know, coming out the top. Um, or, you know, and then next you shoot in a low ball and like, so it's just like shows a variety of what you have in your bar. And visually, if someone goes to your um, profile, they'll see, a menagerie of photos. They won't see the same photo every time. It's just not as visually beautiful. 
So that would be my advice. And then also you might notice that some of your photos get more likes than others. Like if you do a certain thing, maybe if your face is in it, that actually helps a lot, but don't put your face in every photo. It shouldn't be, or just like just the same photo over and over just to get likes. That's my plea. <laughs> I know you're all so beautiful and that's what people want to see, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. So that's the thing. Do find the light, take a variety and make sure you post a variety of photos. Wow. That was awesome. Uh, super informative. Thank you so much, Shannon, for putting that together. So I'll hand it over to a new Elford first. She's going to talk a little bit about capturing the vibe. Hi, everyone. Um, I, when I'm looking at Instagram or looking at photos, one thing that I am lo really looking for is like the vibe or the mood, something that not only captures the cocktail, but also the space in which you're going to be drinking the cocktail. So here are some examples of photos. Um, number one is um, a photo that I really love to showcase party, really. Like it is like, cool, there's this bright pink photo, tall crushed ice like Laura Newman and a, commu a big communal table um, of a human with bright pink hair that matches the cocktail, which I love. Also something about the space is like, you feel like, is it outside or is it inside or is it an inside space that looks like the outside, whatever, we're gonna have a couple of drinks, hang out with our friends and it's just a really fun party um, vibe. And then you go from number one to number two and boom, so this photo was taken just a couple of doors down at a different bar, um, and you immediately can see that it's a completely different vibe and a completely different mood. You can see that it's dark, it's moody, it's brooding. Maybe a poet is in there wanting to drink this cocktail. Um, it's a classic style cocktail in a coupe, which, you know, nothing says cocktail more to me than just, just even seeing a coupe. You have like this manicured garnish, so, immediately you might think, okay, this is like a classic style cocktail bar. Um, and then number three is something that's very like relevant to now. This photo is taken of uh, some classic cocktails, but they are placed outside of the space. Um, and in the photo, this photo is also conveying like, oh, okay, what's behind the actual cocktail? Oh, there's a mason jar for delivery or to go drinks. Um, but then you can see like, okay, they're showing me that this is how I'm probably going to get these cocktails delivered to my house. And then the photo of how I can recreate this photo, the cocktail itself. Um, and it's also just very like bright and sunny and outdoors, um, but still very classic. And then again, boom, go down to number four and it's another classic cocktail, um, from the same bar as the, as photo number three, but now it's bringing you back inside. And Shannon talked about a little bit about um, if you're doing a series of photos, don't use the same um, picture multiple times in your feed. Number three and number four, I think are really good examples of a photo that you can put in your Instagram feed of showing um, the difference of the mood in your venue. So you can show number three first and say like, hey, this is what we're doing. Look at our beautiful cocktails. Uh, and then number four can be the second photo in your, in your um, feed to say, hey, remember this bar? This is what it looks like inside. And you know, someday soon you'll be able to drink this inside. But what I really love about it is this, this cocktail is positioned in a space in this bar where it's like one of the only spaces in this bar where light comes in. <laughs> so we had to move furniture around, place this cocktail here, try to capture the reflection off of that copper table that you see. So it was hitting it, but we really wanted to get the, we really wanted to include the fact that there's a patio in the background of this photo. So it took a lot of moving furniture around like Shannon suggests, uh, it's so important. But if you have these two photos next to each other, you can be like, Okay, I can see the relation. And then this next slide is also another photo that's very relevant. And so in addition to like getting your lighting right and conveying the mood and the vibe of your space, looking at how you're gonna frame your photos is really important. So photo five is 
a, um, a delivery drink or a cocktail to go. You can tell that it's a large format cocktail. You can tell that it's outside because this person is standing next to a tree, um, which we don't have in our bar, I wish. Um, but the first photo, it's the focus is on the cocktail and the tree. So outdoors cocktail, got it, cool. Then you look at the photo next to it, number six, and we framed it in a way, we moved a little bit further back and zoomed in, but you can see that this person is still out, outdoors and now holding a different cocktail to go, but you can see that there's a bandana around the person's neck. And so this makes this photo just slightly more relevant to the times and also might let the reader know like, okay, cool, this is part of their new program that they're doing to help get cocktails out the door and delivered to people. Last but not least, a really important uh, part of uh, our presence on Instagram and the mood and the vibe that we're setting is bringing in people to, to collaborate with us, bringing in artists and photographers. This is a photo that a photographer took for us to uh, use at obviously a very tropical bar. And it's fun, it's super playful. And this is, you know, I can take okay cocktail photos. I took that photo of the martini glass on the copper table with my iPhone, but there's no way I'd be able to take this photo, nor would my creative mind gone there. Um, so collaboration is like the last major step that I think is really important when you're taking um, photos for your bar and to encapsulate your vibe and the mood. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. It's such a diverse array of photos. And like, I've been to some of your bars and some of them are just down the street from each other, but they do have completely different vibes. And I really like how much you're able to capture that and portray it to your audience and make them feel like they've already arrived before we've been getting there. <clears throat> um, next up, I've got Mr. Adam George Fournier, who's going to tell us a little bit about maximizing the success of a story with a great photo. Adam? Hi, uh, thanks, Andrew. So uh, I, I actually come to the world photography, oddly enough, because I'm a writer. Uh, I started doing events for a program I was running years ago uh, to try to bring people into the venue on an off night, but also a way to try to help educate people. I was doing these massive write-ups about the spirits I was featuring, this history, uh, and no one would read them. <laughs> but what I started to notice was that any accompanying photo would get some traction. And if the photo was more dynamic or more interesting and told a story, it was more likely someone would actually read the post and comment and then actually visit the bar. So I come at this as more of an amateur angle. I'm not looking to get the perfectly professional shots. I'm looking to capture the moment and the mood of what I'm writing about with a complimentary photo. Uh, the first example here, uh, number one, was a photo for a dive into Johnny Walker that I did. Uh, the article for the website was a moody look at uh, the multicolored world of Johnny Walker. It's an empire of a brand with a very deep history, yet because of its ubiquity, it can often be overlooked in favor of newer, shinier brands. So I want an image that felt a bit mysterious, yet classic, that made you look twice at what was going on. Uh, all of this is natural decoration from the venue. Uh, pretty much everything I work with is whatever I can find that day. Uh, the tea candles, the plant, the dream cart, these were all just parts of the space that I would walk through every day. I isolated the space and took a, a lot of photos from a lot of different lengths and closeness uh, before I sat down with them. I often find that I really don't know what I've captured until I look through the photos afterwards. Uh, if you're taking photos on your phone like I am, I highly recommend taking a lot more than you think you need. Uh, it's a digital age. You can clean out your camera roll afterwards, uh, but nothing is worse than going to edit a shot or try to find the mood you're looking for and realizing nothing captures it right or nothing is usable or it's all off center because you only took two or three photos. Uh, speaking of editing, uh, almost everything I post or use is touched up in some way. Uh, a lot of times it is just a built-in Instagram editor, but I also do use Google Snaps, uh, Snapseed because I am a dirty, dirty Android phone user. Uh, yes, I am that person that sends green bubbles to group texts. I apologize. Uh, but I will say that no matter what other editing I do, I do have a consistent set of uh, base filters that I like to start with. That way there is a subtle through line when someone visits my page or website that connects uh, everything that goes along with that. Uh, speaking of mood, the next shot, number two here, was an attempt to capture a more current mood. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got 
uh, was to make the photography more personal, to humanize it even if it is a still life. So this photo, Tangray 10, was trying to capture the mood and mini rituals of my shelter at home life. Um, uh, one of the things that's brought me peace is this ritual of making a Tangray martini for myself and my partner. So I wrote a post about that and wanted an image to capture it. The environment reflects that I am at home. Uh, the background is the brick of our apartment building and it's our porch furniture. I want it to feel brighter to reflect finding those moments of optimism as well as the desire to be outside even if it is just that porch. Um, and uh, the Tangray takes center focus as it's the center of this little ritual. Uh, and when I say I approach things from an amateur point of view, I mean that I'm not looking to eliminate imperfections. I think this photo really shows that. I'm working with what I have around me. The table isn't doctored. That gold paint on there is there because we got bored and started lacquering things during our day. But I feel it helps add uh, that personality and personal touch that I was talking about because they are authentic flaws. Because I am usually working with natural light and whatever environment I'm in, I am also working to make a generic background feel professional and planned, uh, which is what this next photo, photo number three, uh, really helps to highlight. Uh, this is just a photo of an old fashioned cocktail that I took for a series that I do uh, that I call Drinking Poetic, uh, where I look at the poetry inherent in a drink, its history, why it works, the R&D process, essentially the beat and rhythm to making a drink even before you actually physically make that drink. Uh, for the old fashioned, I took it in the venue I was working at at the time and I wanted something dramatic with depth. Uh, it's, uh, old fashioned is the first true cocktail and there's a lot of history yet simplicity uh, in it. Uh, and I want some clean to put the drink up front uh, with its current popularity while at the same time imply a lot of space behind and around it. I really remember crawling on the floor of this restaurant before service trying to find the right angle and view for here. Um, and that is another piece of advice that I have, uh, even if you're just using a phone, go for as many different angles as uh, you ha uh, can, because you'll never know what's gonna actually give you the right uh, uh, view for that. The last piece of advice I have is don't be afraid to ask for help. Even if something asks me a helping hand for holding a drink like in photo four here, uh, this is my personal opinion, but I hate those POV shots of someone holding a bottle, clearly taking uh, a photo from their phone. Uh, it just doesn't connect or feel natural. Uh, and when I first started out, I was really embarrassed to ask other people to help. But once I got over that, things became a lot more dynamic. For instance, this photo from that same kind of series, a drink called the West of Brooklyn. It's a drink that followed me around through multiple venues that I worked at. And I really wanted something to imply the complexity of how it had changed over the years. And this background, this uh, metalwork was on the wall of the venue. And I really wanted to use it, but I never found a way to get the right angle until I finally just asked the server for, to hold the drink before service. Uh, and it really helped the drink uh, and the photo pop a lot more, even right down to the flash of color on her ring. Again, it's not something that was planned, just something she had to be wearing that day. Uh, so I guess what it really boils down to me is having that story in your head and then using the uh, ingredients and things that are around you to help build up a shot that is larger than the sum of its parts. Uh, and that's you, what I'm always trying to do to find that personality and that storyline. That is awesome, Adam. Thank you for sharing. And I will say two things on that. One, I greatly look forward to our ritual um, martini on your stoop. It entertains me uh, dearly. And I also recommend taking many pictures of the cocktail because when I look through my phone, I see one picture of a cocktail and about 20 selfies of myself. Um, <clears throat> but next I've got uh, one of my friends, Laura Newman, our former um, world-class champ 2018 she's going to tell us a little bit about how to give your photos a look and feel of their own uh, especially in a world where many of the photos seem to look repetitive and the same uh, laura tell us how to reach your desired audience hey andrew thanks so when i'm creating the look and the feel of my space um, as someone that owns two different spaces it's really important to, before you even create the account or before you kind of revamp everything, to just really sit down and think about, okay, what am I really trying to convey here? I think that, you know, when you're writing, say, for an Instagram account for a bar, it's important for your writing to have a tone and to have a, a voice. But at the same time, it's also really important for your, your photos to also have a tone and a voice that's consistent in order to sort of make guests that have been there feel like they're still at the, at the bar. And then also to give guests who maybe haven't visited yet a really 
coherent understanding of what to expect from your place. So prior to starting the Instagram account for my first bar, kind of did an exercise where I wrote down kind of like the vibe and what I was trying to communicate through my photos. Um, so to give an example for my, this one space, um, it's based on a grand tropical hotel bar. So I wanted the photos to really convey the sense of elegance and specialness and kind of grandeur, which I think we communicate really well through using really beautiful glassware, um, really in kind of over the top or special garnishes, and then using a lot of branded items and accessories whenever possible, such as custom swizzle sticks or, or coasters, which you'll see in many of our photos. Um, I wanted the photos to mostly be shot with a natural light effect or at the very least with lighting that seemed pretty natural. So I generally try to avoid um, a strobe or flashing effect, but I do use some techniques that I'll talk about in a second to get some lighting into a pretty dark space. Um, and then I also want to give off this kind of like shabby chic vibe. So I convey that usually through decor details with like used marble, distressed wall paint, velvet. Um, and then finally, we're also a neighborhood bar though, even though this bar has like won awards and is, you know, like cocktail-y. It's not, I didn't want it to be too fancy. So we also uh, give this, we highlight our employees and people who have, and the people who make our bar run because they all have passionate regulars and people really get excited about pictures of them. So we focus on portraits of our staff or we'll include a human element in, po in photos, maybe a hand holding something or the back of someone's head, like people, not just an empty space. Um, we'll also focus on kind of one-off or really frivolous cocktails I know Shannon mentioned uh, making sure that you don't post a picture of a drink that someone couldn't necessarily get at your bar, but we will sometimes include photos more like that, where it'll be like, we did this for a special event, showing that it's a little broader range of what we can do, but at the same time, we've made it really clear to people that are seeing these pictures that there's, an, there's not an expectation that they can actually get that at the bar. And then we also feature our staff dogs, First of all, because I think dogs are adorable and they play really well on um, social media. And then also because we are a dog friendly bar, but due to some local regulations, we can't necessarily advertise that. So by showing dogs in the photos, it's a way of being like, hey guys, like you can come bring your dog too to enjoy a cocktail with them. So when it comes to lighting, like Shannon was saying, I actually come in at 7 a.m. sometimes to shoot so that I'm able to follow natural light because we don't get any direct sunlight after 11.30 a.m. I'll also use work lights that I picked up at a local hardware store. Um, they're pretty inexpensive and you can actually, they come with clips a lot of the time in little stands. So I'll clip them to the back of furniture or just like a bag or a bar stool or something. And then you can also tape a very inexpensive thin paper plate over them if you want to have less of a stroby effect and something that's a little more diffused and muted. Um, I'll also put the drinks in weird places to get great light. Some great tips that I got were to put things on the floor or to actually bring a piece of furniture outside and photograph with that. Again, just making sure that, you know, you can set expectations like, we don't necessarily have patio, but like, here's a picture of it outside. Or like, I wouldn't serve you a drink on the floor, but haha, this looks silly. Like, you can make sure that you're not, you know, just make sure it doesn't look dirty if it's on the floor. Um, for tools, I shoot everything pretty much on my iPhone. Um, and for editing, I traditionally just use the uh, editing software on Instagram. Although if I'm using something for a website or for a client, I will use Adobe Lightroom. Um, I'll also use an app called Wittagram to keep photos in a non-square ratio for Instagram, which I think is cool, a cool way to kind of break up the pattern of square photos. And then just these are some examples of different ones. That first photo, it's a compelling color. It has some beautiful plants behind it to break it up. Like Shannon spoke about, there's that line at the edge of the table. Photo two is quite similar. It was actually shot, shot in about the same space. So that's definitely one I wouldn't post immediately afterwards, even though they're totally different drinks. The backgrounds are quite dissimilar, but it again is a different feel. It's crushed ice, which I love, uh, and a banana leaf, which I also love. And it's another cool way of showing that kind of shabby chic kind of wall element. In three, that's a 7.30 a.m. shot, and that's gonna show really how starkly different the light is compared between two and three, and how you can get that really bright direct light but I did want to create more of a bar vibe. So I lit votives, even though it was 7.30, just to give a little more sense of place and have these little textural elements that also give you a sense of space. And then finally, picture four is a um, picture of Cece, who does the prep for the entire bar. And we like to give just shout outs to our staff. And like I said, kind of include them in the process because they're the ones Cece, like we couldn't open the bar without her and all the work she does. So it's cool for people to get to see the person who's literally responsible for them getting to enjoy these drinks. That is awesome. <laughs> Go CC. We appreciate your hard work. 
Um, and Laura, those are amazing tips. I'm really, really grateful for that. Thank you for putting them together for our viewers. Um, and especially those cocktails look really tasty. Uh, so I can't wait to get to Birmingham and try them out. Shannon, I'll get started with you. Several people have actually inquired about this. Um, and I often find myself in dark bars without any windows or much natural lighting. So do you have any tips for us to light up the scene without buying expensive special equipment? Uh, and secondly, another viewer asks if you often or always use natural light, or do you regularly bring artificial lighting into your photo shoots? Well, I thought Laura had a lot of good advice on that. With the work lights, you can get them at um, hardware stores. And if you put a sort of diffuser in front of it, like she said, a paper plate or some kind of mesh, it will kind of spread the light a little more. So since I am a professional person, I don't have work lights. I have real lights. But I, I can say, like, if I'm at a bar and I want to take a photo with my phone, I, I, this takes two phones. But um, a good way to... I do use a lot of natural light, but I also use a lot of artificial light. We'll go into that more later. But with my very fancy silvery thing that I got at the meal delivery kit, um, I, if I had an assistant, I have them close the lights right now. But I will take just my flashlight, and I can bounce light off of this, and it will hit the cocktail. You can also go directly to the cocktail, not... Like, if the cocktail were here, I wouldn't shoot it. I wouldn't light it like this. I would light it, like, to the side and back and shoot from over here. So if that's too harsh, like I said, you could kind of reflect off of something reflecty, like that. Like, if you use white, it might not give you enough. But I also, the mirror, like, if you have the mirror and you reflect off of it, it can give you some aggressive light. You might look insane. Like if you're in a bar with a mirror, but you know, whatever, do what you have to do. Nothing then, unusual. Yeah. And then also, I mean, just using um, like the candles too, you could have like a mark. Cause some of those shots that I saw um, with Adam and Anu, um, they're kind of dark and moody and it's okay. Like you didn't have to have the whole thing lit. And I know that it's hard in bars. Um, but I, again, Laura had some really good tips. And then I wanted to say for me personally, I shoot um, both natural and bring my own. So a lot of, t like this photo that's up right now, I think everyone can see is shot. I have two strobes, one behind and one to the side. You guys are getting, you know, a pattern here of what I like to do. Um, but uh, so for action shots, I think using um, artificial light is, it, you really can catch, capture a lot more stuff happening rather than having blurry hands, which sometimes like that looks cool. But um, like you saw in the video, that was all natural light. That was a very bright place. You can still shoot in darker bars. You just get near that window, um, try to make your own light with the work lights, and then you can try some of the like using a flashlight reflection off of shiny things. That's awesome. Really great uh, tools and techniques. Um, and just to note folks that part of our follow up with the uh, Diageo Bar Academy newsletter, when we have all the resources available, we'll also have lots of these questions written out in full length answers from Shannon and our panelists. So if we don't get to all the questions uh, this afternoon, have no fear, they will be eventually answered. Um, Anu, I've got one for you. Uh, you mentioned in your um, slides there that you do some really cool collaborate collaborations with local artists. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. I actually have a lot to say on the subject, so I'll do I'll bullet point this to make it fast. Um, I can't even stress the importance of working with another human on projects. For one thing, it uh, you can tap into their creativity while expressing your vision of the shoot. Um, it allows you to do these larger cocktail shoots. Like I'm sure you've all seen the Instagram photos where it's like a, a table full of plates and cocktails. Um, it's great if you're collaborating with someone so they can be over the shot, setting it up and kind of directing you where to put the plates. Um, and also as a bartender, I'm assuming most people in here are bartenders, you need to be making those drinks and keeping them looking fresh 
and ready to go for the shot. So having multiple hands is just so important. Um, also, you know, photographers are trained to look through the lens and see what will look best in your shot. So they can direct you to move a garnish, um, move a table. Um, again, another just huge time saver. Um, but yeah, I just think the most important thing is um, when you're working with other people, you're not only grabbing the audience that you already have for your photos and for your bar, but you're just, there's outreach there and you're reaching a broader audience and you're tapping into the artist community. Like many of us right now might need work. Let's not ever forget about our artists and our photographers who are experts in their field. And um, I just say to lean heavily on them and it's, it's incredible how um, projects can take a life of their own when you work with someone else. That's awesome. And I know you're in Seattle and I spent the last seven years in San Francisco, which are both very artist driven communities. And it's part of the attraction to me is being around and connecting with artists. <clears throat> but it's also really nice to get their perspective. And, um, you know, this is world class community week and so much of the world class cocktail delivery is the experience and the storytelling. So to be able to do a collaboration like that, I think gives you a much more powerful serve when you're telling your guests about the cocktails that they're drinking. Going back over to Adam, uh, you do a lot of work with blogs, um, professional work, your own um, ventures as well. I was wondering when you're taking photos for a cocktail bar as a job, or doing something for your own personal business, is there anything different that you do to elevate stuff for your personal use? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the cocktail bars or things like that, there's always a very like, clear through line of what that kind of vibe is looking for, uh, finding that space and what you're doing for it. If it's just for a personal use of things that I'm trying to elevate, I'm applying a lot of the same techniques, but I'm trying to drive a lot more of my personality into it. There is maybe some more of, uh, uh, selfie work kind of going on there or other things along those nature for lack of a better word. There's something that shows that personality as part of it. Like uh, as simple as um, again, asking someone for help and saying, Hey, I'm going to cheers the camera for you. Can you take this photo for me? And then taking a look through it. Uh, the, the joke uh, with me and my partner is I don't, I don't think that I have a particularly good eye yet. I'm always the one who is told to, take photos of other people when they, when we get stopped on the street, because there's something about being able to just move something slightly off center to capture that for people. I'd say, look, if you're looking to elevate for your own personal use, look for the things that are quirky and unique about the frame and the photo that speak to you. If you can find that quirk, you can highlight that and dial it up to 10 and that will help elevate anything you're doing. That's a personal level. Thank you so much. Um, and Shannon and, and Laura can probably chime in on this too. A lot of people don't have professional equipment and we're wondering what tips you have for using a phone camera instead of a fancy one. And additionally, if there are any apps that you recommend for taking the pictures and then for editing them. Well, I think Laura said, I don't remember the, she said a couple apps. What was the... So I use, if I'm going to be editing something just on a computer, if I'm able to do that, I like to use Lightroom, which is part of the Adobe suite. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's just on the phone, um, I do have a Photoshop Plus, I believe it's called. And that's just kind of like baby Photoshop. I can fix kind of like some small imperfections. It's not obviously the full suite. And then Wittagram, I don't know how to say it, uh, W-H-I-T-A-G-R-A-M. That's a cool way to preserve the aspect ratio of a photo. Um, you know, if it's like kind of taller or more horizontal, and then it'll kind of add in white or whatever color you want edges around it so that it will be in a square format for Instagram. But you're able to preserve, like if you really love the aspect ratio or kind of the, you know, length and width of something, it lets you continue to use that. So I, I definitely, I use Photoshop Express on my phone. That's the one I meant, yeah, Photoshop. Yeah. It's, I, and, and then I also use Visco every once in a while, VSCO. Um, I usually make sure I crop within these programs and not an Instagram because sometimes when you crop using Instagram, it makes, I don't know if you've ever posted anything where it's like in the end, it kind of turns fuzzy and you're like, what the heck happened? I don't know. It was like a glitch. So I like to use those programs on my phone to make sure I have the crop that I'm going to use. 
And also I, what I do when I'm in there, I like to maybe like bump up the highlights or the whites. And maybe if it's kind of, the shadows are dark, I'll bring the shadows up, add some contrast. I like, um, also you can change color balance. Like if it's too yellow, you can kind of like pull it over to blue, just like slight normal, just to make it look more natural. And um, I also like to use the clarity and that little magic wand that's an Instagram. It don't overdo it, but like it can sometimes make ice just like, Hey, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here and I'm clear. And so I like the clarity function and also unfold is good for using an in Instagram stories. It sounds very similar to the program, Laura, you said, but you can like put white around a photo or you can like have space to write stuff underneath it if you wanted to have a message in your stories. So Visco, Photoshop Express, Unfold, all those apps on your phone. That is awesome. Yeah, and I can attest to it, like just downloading a couple of those apps myself over the last year uh, has really upped the power of my uh, seemingly weak phone camera. So um, thank you all for sharing those with us. That was really great. And we do have several other questions. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to get to them. As I mentioned, we will answer them and you'll have um, thoroughly written out responses coming to you soon if you reach out to us and stay tuned to our Instagram and Facebook feeds, as well as by following the Diageo Bar Academy newsletter. <clears throat> so that wraps up our second of three sessions for today. And uh, I know that I personally feel much more confident about taking high quality photos and using them in valuable ways. I'm Andrew Meltzer. I'll be back tomorrow for more.